black, dark-skinned man, just like you. Right. Jesus Christ is a dark-skinned man according to the Bible. Right. Come over here and learn about your history. Come learn about your Messiah in the Bible and what he looked like. Because right. he looks just like you. He doesn't look like the white man that everybody's preaching, okay? Right. So my brother, right now, we were taught that he didn't have a color or he was white. You said what? Amen, amen, there you go, get that. Now, we was taught that he didn't have a color or that he was a white man, but you just heard in the Bible that he's a black man according to the Bible. That's now, right. Get, Daniel, get that account. All right, we're going to go further. We'll get the most high too because we, we say that nobody has seen the most high God or he doesn't have a color, right? See? The Bible says opposite. These are things we got to come out of because the Christian church is not teaching you who you are according to the Bible. Right. That's why we, that's why our conditions on this neighborhood are horrible. Bring it out. Read that. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 10 and verse 5. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold, a certain man clothed in linen whose loins were girded with fine gold of you fat. So looking at it right now, got a nice garment on. All right, got a nice gold girdle. Go ahead. His body also was like the barrel, and his face has the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms. His what? And his arms. So we're going into his arms. We heard about his feet earlier. We're going to look at his arms now. Go ahead. And his feet, like in color to polished Bruh, that's the same account you heard in Revelations. His body is dark skin, black, or what do you want to say dark brown, whatever. He's a dark skinned man according to the Bible. Right. These are two prophets giving the same account, okay? So we got to get out the mindset that Jesus Christ is a white man or he doesn't have color. The Jeez. reason the reason why they teach you he doesn't have color because they don't want you to know who you are. Right. They don't want the greatest man ever walked this earth to be associated with so-called niggas. Bring it out! So-called spits with the lowest of the lows. Right. That's where they teach you opposite, all right? But to come back to who we are according to the Bible, all right? Our customs are not celebrating Sunday as uh as the high holy day. Right. He gave us the Sabbath day. That's when you worship. Today's the Sabbath day right. according to the Lord. Get right. that. We're going to go into your customs, brother. We'll bring you back to who you are. You too, my brother. You don't celebrate Christmas or Thanksgiving. Or, or Thanksgiving. Think about that real quick. Thanksgiving. What happened on Thanksgiving? What, what was the big event that happened? Well, what happened before that feast? What happened after that? What, give me the accounts. When the pilgrims came over, what did they do to your people? They slaughtered the Native Americans, did they not? Right. Bring it out. They made a feast out of it. We celebrate that every year, right? My brother, don't hey, listen, brother. Brother, come over here, man. Listen, going over there is gonna bring you death. Right. Come back to life. Give me that. Give me um, give me uh Psalms chapter 111, verse 10. We're trying to show you, bro. Keeping the laws of God is what, what he wants you to do. Not anything opposite, because what are they doing over there is not of God. Alright, get that. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. This is the, everything we're reading, bro, is coming out of the Bible. We have to make that plain. Every time we say something, we're going to bring a script to back it up. Read that. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All right, so anybody that wants to be called considered wise, you have to, you have to fear the Lord. God's going to give you how to fear him. Go ahead. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. God said the only way you can be found wise, the only way you can have wisdom or understanding is if you keep his commandments. Right. That's right. If you're not keeping the Lord's commandments, you are a dumb man or a dumb woman according to the Bible. Right. We're going to make a plan out here. If you're not following the laws, treating your brother how you should be treated, you are not following God's ways. Give me Leviticus 19. All right. Says my sis, come up here. I'm going to show you some more stuff. All right. We're to clean up our communities because nobody else is going to do it. Right. If we don't come out here and do it, it's not going to happen. Right. All right, let's go. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 17. Bring it out. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. The Lord is telling us this is very simple. Don't hate your brother in your heart. Now, my sister, let me give you an example. If I come and, and steal some money from you, is that showing love or hate? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Come, on. come up here, sis. No, 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 no. Is, am I showing love to you if I come and take your money that you worked for? Or is that hate? Am I showing love to you if I steal from you? Th that's hate, right? Read that again. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. See, since the thing is, you're, you're not going to say because we're conditioned to be at the bottom. That's I can see it right now. You feel like if something bad happens to you, it's supposed to happen. That's not the case. Why does every nation treat us like trash out here? Why does this man allow people to smoke crack in the back of his store if he loves you so much? These other nations hate you. I'm going to be playing with you. They allow drugs to be pumped in your communities and guns, all the violence that spreads in our communities, they allow it. But they don't let it happen in their communities, do they? They don't let that happen. Come learn who you are according to the Bible, sister. My brother, come over here. Read that again. 
Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. All right, so rebuke means to correct. We're gonna show some correction to you, sis, because we love you. Give me 1 Corinthians 3, 16, all right? What I'm gonna show you right now is love because we are here for the love of our people. Because look at it, look at our community right here. Look what goes on behind that store. We come out here often. Behind that gate over there too, we know what goes on out here, right? Now, is, is that a productive thing in our society? What'd you say? You said it is productive? Right, you said it's not, okay, good. So we're gonna show you correction because we love you, sis. Read this. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter three and verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. All right, so your body's a temple, that's what God says. And the only way he can dwell in you is if you're doing the, doing the laws of God like we said earlier. Now smoking defiles your body. Right. Because when you smoke, what does it do to you, sis? It kills your body, right? We understand that. So what we have to do is stop smoking. Stop defiling our temple that, so God can use us and we can be vessels for his mercy, all right? There's, there's other things like that too, like for example, if I'm selling drugs to you to allow you to do that, that's not good. I'm killing my people. I'm selling my people death, right? Give me, do, you like that? Good, well stay here and learn some more, bro. Give me Deuteronomy 22. You said what, sis? I said I've been there, Been there, done you say you don't, you repented from smoking? Good, that's one thing. Now let's move on to smoking. It might be a little tough, but we gotta do it in steps, but we gotta get rid of that smoking because when you're smoking, I'm sure you got little people that look up to you, they're learning your ways. They say, you know what, I wanna smoke like her. And they're learning to kill themselves, to defile their body so, so uh, God can't use them, right? You say you're a pothead? That, that weed thing, when they say, when you, put, when you put fire to weed, it messes up the chemicals. Like, herbs like that can be used to heal you, but when you put fire to it, it changes the chemical structure of it. You're not being healed by smoking weed. That's a myth, that's a lie. Yeah, go to Genesis and get that one. We'll show you what that, what that stuff was made for. Weed was not made to smoke. Because think about it, when you smoke weed or anything like that, what's it do to your body? It's a depressant, it, it brings you down. Makes you lazy, makes you want to eat all day and just do nothing, right? It's an intoxin, right? It messes up your mind. Keep going. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 9 and verse 3. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, right. even as the green herb have I given you all things. Now that green herb is made to eat, all right? These things are made to heal. These are healing structures. 104 and 14. But that's what I want to thank you. 104 and 14. Right, you don't smoke it, right? Yeah, I smoke. Hold on, yeah. so do you? you I smoke and I'm a chef. But but you can cook with it, right? Yeah. But you're not smoking it. Yes, I am. So you do both of them. Yes, right. Oh. Sis, which one are you addicted to, though? <laughs> are you addicted to, I'm, I'm to addicted cooking to it or cook. smoking it? I'm addicted to cooking. But okay, so you. That means you're addicted to smoking weed to relax. Yeah, yeah. So you're addicted to that. All right, sis, what I'm saying is when you smoke, it, it, it doesn't, your mind is not sober. You're not sober-minded when you smoke. God can't use you when you're not sober-minded. That's like me drinking a bunch. Huh? Get that, get the sober-minded one, get me one sober. Yeah, God can't use you when you're drunk. When I'm smoking or I'm drinking, what can happen with that? I can go and harm somebody. A lot of cases, a lot of cases in relationship, when someone gets drunk in a relationship, you hear domestic violence, right? Because somebody's fighting and then it gets carried away, somebody gets hit. People get sexually, you know, touched and everything. Because you're not sober minded, you can't think clearly. We wouldn't do these things if we was in our right mind. Right. All right, read this. This is the book of 1 Peter, chapter five and verse eight. Bring it out. Be sober. The Lord says to be sober, all right? That's where to follow what the Lord says. Because he knows when we're not in our right mind, we'll often do something that goes against his laws. All right, like drinking and driving, I could kill somebody. Smoking weed, I can, I'm still inebriated, I can't, I can't function the right way. Right. Read that again. Be sober. Go ahead. Be vigilant. Be vigilant. Now, if I'm, if I'm not sober, that means I'm not vigilant. Do you have children? 
you have three. Okay, when you was younger, if you if they, if they was in your custody and you were smoking weed or being drunk, you're not sober minded enough to protect them. You're not gonna make the right decision for them because you're not in your right mind. Right. That's what the Lord is telling you. You can't be vigilant if you're not in your right mind. Go ahead. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And then when he catches you in that state when you're not sober, that's when he sends your temptations around you. That's when he says all type of hell to make sure that you're gonna. It's brother. Take this out, brother. Do you smoke weed too? No. What do you do? What's your What's your addiction? Why well, to heal Adderall. our people? What's your addiction? Adderall. Adderall. Alcohol. Get that all. Drink it early in the morning. Just Alcohol. There's nothing wrong with drinking, but in moderation. All right. Yeah. We can't have. We can't be drinking to the point, like you said, to be sober. When you're not in your right mind, what's going to happen out here? You can't protect yourself. You're no good to nobody. All right. You're, you're more of a a harm than anything, okay? All right, hey, my brother, you came from over there? Hey, what's your name? My name's Johanny. Tyrone. Tyrone, Tyrone. On that sign, on the back of that sign, what would your father be considered? Is he, would he be number one, number two, or number three? Would he be a so-called African-American? Yeah, yes, sir, your biological father. Biological? Yes, sir, yes, sir. That's what he is, my biological father. No, what would his, like, his so-called race be? Would he be an African-American? or a Haitian or a West Indian? What would it be considered today? Well, based on what the world wants, they will call them African American. Right, that's what I was asking. Yeah. So, he, okay, cool. But I wouldn't call them African American. Good, I wouldn't call them that either because that's a derogatory term. Right. African American is nowhere in this Bible. Right. Now, with that being said, what would your father be called from this Bible? What, what nation would he come from? Nation of Judah, or uh, uh, Israel. So you know that? That's a, that's a heavy statement that you just said, all right? That's a heavy thing you just said. So that since he came from the tribe of Judah, that means you descend from the tribe of Judah as well. You follow in your father's footsteps, okay? Let me get who else came from the tribe of Judah. I'm pretty sure you know this if you go over there, all right? We'll get somebody else that came from that tribe of Judah. Ready? Sure. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 7 and verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Hey, brother, come back. The Bible says that our Lord, Jesus the Christ, Jesus Christ the Messiah, came from the tribe of Judah, so that same blood that ran through Christ's body is running through your veins right now. Right. This book is about lineage, right. all right? You understand that? I understand We're on the same page, okay. Right. Now, let's get another thing. Now, over there at the church, do they teach you what color Christ is according to the Bible? I know what color Christ is. What color is he? He's a man of color. He was a man of color. What, co what color? There's many colors, like, which one? <laughs> Black man, all praise to the Father. That's right. All praise to the Father. That's a beautiful thing. Now, let me ask you this. Are they teaching that over there? Oh, I don't go to that church. Okay, okay. <laughs> Do you, okay, even better. So, with that being said, we understand that Jesus Christ is a black man. Now, give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. We're going to go a little further. You said you're from the tribe of Judah. We acknowledge that. All praises. Jesus Christ is a black man. Let's keep on going. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. Now, this is Moses. You're familiar with Moses leading the children of Israel out of, out of Egypt, right, into the wilderness. Now, you say you're an Israelite, so he's speaking to you. He's speaking to your people. Go ahead. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. God said that the Israelites are a holy people. We understand that the word holy means to be separate and set apart from everything else, okay? Go ahead. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So out of 18 nations, the Lord chose our nation to be special. That means different. All right, go ahead. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Now that's the kicker right there. God says we are to be above all the other people on this earth. Right. All right, we're not to be equal to them. There's right. no such thing as we do the same things as them. We're held at the same standards. Right. No, God says we are his chosen people. people. You agree with that, right? I agree with that one. Sure. Good, so the man in that store, the one that owns that store, he's not of your nation. He doesn't descend from our nation. So are you above him or are you equal to him? Hold on, read that again. Wait, hold on, read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Because you're an Israelite, go ahead. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So did God say that you above him or are you equal to him? God said I'm above. All praise to the Father. You, do you believe that though? You understand that? Good. Yeah. Let's go further to some laws now. Let's get to the laws because the reason why our people, hold on, get Jeremiah 17 and 4. I'm going to show you why we're not equal to them in this, in this society today. We're not above right now. We're at the, we're at the bottom. 
Our people in the slums, the ghettos, the favelas, uh, the barrios. That's where we're at right now. But every other nation lives above us. They can come into your neighborhoods and set up stores and profit off of you and go back to their, go back to their homes. But us, we can't set up stores in our own neighborhood without them being shut down. We can't go into other people's neighborhoods and set up stores because we don't have that luxury. All the nations are against us. Go ahead. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 4. Now this is what the Lord says is going to happen to our people, all right? Pay attention. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage. The Lord said our people would discontinue from our heritage. Now what comes with a heritage? Things like a language, your culture, uh, families, uh, your name. These things will be taken from us. Go ahead. That I gave thee. That the, that the Lord gave us, like you said. God gave us Judah. <laughs> But, the, but they taught us we're African. Hey, brother, come over here and learn about your history, bro. Come over here real quick. You got to go to Petersburg? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. This is very important, man. Hey, call that number on the back. All right, remember, God said that we're not, we're not African Americans. He called us Judah. That's what he called you. Go ahead. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. God said we're going to serve enemies. That's another way you can know we're not all equal. We're not the same. God said the nation of Israel has enemies. Go ahead. In the land which thou knowest not. All right, so we're going to serve our enemies in a land that we know not. We're going to be put into captivity by our enemies, and we're going to lose all of our heritage. All right? Did that happen to our people? It's evident, right? That's another way we know who we are according to the Bible. Is that it? What's verse 5 say? Verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and make his flesh his arm. Give me Deuteronomy 28. Let's get to it. All right? We're going to further prove that you are Israelite according to the Bible, and we've got to come back to the laws of God. That's the only thing that's going to save our people, all right? Because what we learn in church, not saying, I'm not sure what you learn in your church. I know some things, but a lot of churches teach that all nations are equal, that we all go through the same things, that God, that Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, well, they teach the white Messiah. They teach that a white Messiah is going to come back and save everybody. But that doesn't make sense. What do the other nations need to be saved from? The other nations are, are well above us. We are at the bottom, so what do they need to be saved from? Give me verse 1. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. God said, if us being his children, give me Exodus chapter 4 real quick. Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. He said, us, if we follow what God says, we're going to be a blessed people, right? I'm going to show you what God says about us, though. Read that, 422. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 4 and verse 22. Bring it out. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son. God said that Israel, the nation of Israel, is his, is his son. Even my firstborn. We're his firstborn. That's why we, we don't deal with other nations, because God's not dealing with them. Now right. go back to Deuteronomy 28 and get that last part. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. Simply put, if we keep the laws that Moses told to us in the wilderness, what's going to happen? That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. That's another way we know we're not equal. God says if we keep these commandments, we're going to be above all the other nations, just like it said in Deuteronomy 7 and 6. All right? Now, like a good father, if, you're, if your child does well, you might give him a reward, a pat on the back, good job, cool. But what's the flip What's the flip side? If your child does not obey you, what happens if your child doesn't obey you? Correct. Correct them, all right? Let's get to the correction. Because like you said in Exodus 4, we're God's children, so let's see what happens if we don't listen. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Bring it out. But it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Just like my brother says, if we don't listen to the Lord, our Father, what's going to happen? That all these curses. It says curses, not blessings, but curses. Go ahead. Shall come upon thee and overtake thee. It says we're going to be a cursed nation of people. Nation is men leading by example. 